Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone present here as per your respective time zones. I would like to welcome you all to the first Live Live Tech Talk session of this year. Wishing you all a very happy new year. I am Balvinder Kaur, your host for today's session. As you all know, Tech Mahindra BPS team conducts Tech Talk sessions at regular intervals to help connect you directly with our leaders, customers, and partners. Today, we are here with yet another interesting session with senior Tech Mahindra leaders, where they will talk about AI or ML based automated decision support system for invoice control and spend management in real time for any organization procuring goods and services. I'm sure you would like to know more. To take you through this session, I would like to invite Mr. Aditya Subramanian, business consultant with around nine years of experience. Adi, you may kindly take over. Thanks for that, Val. Um, hey, everyone. Uh, it's really great to see uh, many of you who are inquisitive to know more about the problems we are solving for our customers using AI and ML. We have even started to box this as uh, a platform that can solve similar problems across domains. You know, The platform we are going to be talking about in depth today is the automated decision support system for spend management using AI and ML. That sounds heavy, isn't it? So we have uh, with us the panel members who will uh, take us through this wonderful journey on how they con conceptualized this uh, platform, um, what challenges they faced while uh, developing it, and uh, what are the industries, domains uh, this platform can be applied into, and how, how do they see developing this space in the future, right? So we have uh, Mr. Kishore Malatula. He is the global head of analytics at Tech Mahindra BPS. He brings in over 20 years of experience working into different capacities. And uh, next we have Mr. Abhay Tiku. He's a principal consultant for AI and data engineering at Tech Mahindra BPS. He has over 15 years of experience working into different capacities. And next we have Mr. Aditya Jha. He's a principal consult consultant as well and for the AI and analytics at Tech, Tech Mahindra BPS. He has over 15 years of experience working into different capacities as well. So we have a good panel here today. Uh, really exciting, excited to be moderating this session. And uh, just a reminder, reminder to all of you, um, we have a Q&A session at the end of the session. So have your questions ready and we will have a panel answer them for you. All right, let's, let, let me get started with Mr. Kishore first. And uh, before we dive straight into the topic, how are you doing, Kishore? Good, good, Adi. Thanks, thanks. This is, this is great. Happy Friday. Yes, indeed. Happy Friday. So, uh, being the leader of the practice, would you like uh, to share something uh, about the overview of the platform or your broader perspective on uh, uh, the scheme of things around what we have we have built uh, right now and what led us towards building the system or any any uh, any of this around the platform? Could you could you please give us uh, yeah. something about that? Yeah, for sure. Happy to do that. Uh, I think that's a, that's a good kick off and a, a nice start. Right. Uh, See, uh, we being a global company, we work with uh, uh, clients and businesses across all kinds of verticals, right? We have uh, telcos, uh, we have pharma clients, uh, we have media clients, uh, and spread across multiple geographies globally, uh, right? Uh, as as my team, uh, we focus on the analytics part of it. And the way we kind of define and understand and, and also try to, uh, you know, communicate the same in the market for us, analytics is, is more about uh, value addition to the business, right? Any decisions that business managers, that uh, they are in a dilemma, they are facing sometimes, we don't have the data. Sometimes we have the data, but it's very confusing. Uh, Absolutely. Sometimes, uh, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's like, you know, uh, we just need to validate whether we are absolutely right or wrong. Uh, True. About things. Uh, yeah, right. So our endeavor had, has always been, um, you know, can we help decision makers at various different levels? Uh, add value into the based on the information that is available, uh, right? Uh, again, I'm sure uh, my colleagues uh, AJ and 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 Abhay, as we delve into you know the types of decision support systems, they are like data based, model based, communication based. There are a lot of it. They'll talk to talk more about it. 
but overall, when we came up with this uh, whole idea, when we were uh, interacting with our clients, one of the common thing that we've the the common thread that ran across for many of our clients has been, uh, hey, I'm I'm doing a a lot of spends uh, across many different categories. Right, I don't have a standard master list where I can tag and track the expenses easily. Right. Uh, I also spend this money across multiple different vendors, globally spread across. Right, the volume of spends are different. Uh, now I don't know whether I'm I'm getting maximum ROI for the investment that I'm making or not. Right. Uh, right. We've heard this problem come from uh, some of our our, our telecom partners. Uh, because they are managing a lot of field personnel, they are deploying a lot of equipments into the markets. Uh, we've heard this uh, from some of our former people, uh, yeah, right? When they are trying to attribute the costs, uh, marketing costs uh, for, to reach out uh, to opinion leaders, influencers. We've heard this from some of our manufacturing clients, uh, especially from manufacturing clients, because you are trying to source various different parts uh, from various different markets. Sometimes you are procuring them. There is a bidding process. So this 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 whole thing was very confusing. Yeah, it, it sounds like so, a tedious process too. It is, it, it is, it is for sure. Uh, so that's when we said that, okay, can we have uh, something, you know, which could really uh, help support this whole decision-making process? Right. right, right. Even from a number standpoint, if you look at it uh, again, if I'm if I'm not wrong, uh, just twenty to twenty two alone, uh, right? The spend management and that side uh, expected money that is going in and is about close to seven billion dollars and counting. Oh, wow, that's that's quite big, right? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, and and not just that. Next. As the you know geography is history these days, uh, right? So there are suppliers, vendors cropping up across the globe, uh, and and as these walls break down of communication of information, uh, where people can reach out to anyone, source from anywhere, right? The complexity only multiplies, right? And right. it is expected to go at a CAGR of about uh, thirteen to fourteen percent, uh, right? So that's when we put our hats together and we said that, okay, uh, can we come up with a framework, uh, you know, which could really help our clients uh, uh, have a very clear visibility into the spend area. Right. right? Uh, taking the existing data, taking the existing information, a lot of spends that happen in this area uh, is, you know, based on the procurement manages knowledge, right? So that information also needs to be captured and can we model that into, into a little bit intelligent solution and, and build a model, run it on the data and try and see, uh, you know, if it can help our clients. Right. Uh, and and lucky enough for us, we, we have a couple of clients where we have already uh, kind of, to f with one of the client we are we have implemented almost fully we are in the towards the end of it and with another client of ours we are almost in the middle of it uh, but the journey has been enriching so far uh, i think it's a it's a, it's a great area uh, and 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 given the data availability given the information that is there uh, i would say it's a it's a paradise for a data scientist uh, to be honest uh, we could do a whole lot of models play around different kinds of things uh, and 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 also give bringing in the uh, uh, user experience flavor to it, uh, right? Right. That sure does sound like a need of the art, right? It's it's very important right now. Yeah, it is. All thanks, right. thanks for that question, Adi. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that, Kishore. So that really sets up the session pretty well. Uh, I can sort of sense uh, the ask uh, from some of you right now. So let's probably dig into the background of this platform a bit more so that you get to understand what we've done and everything uh, better, right? So let me uh, pull in Abhay on this. So Abhay, uh, could you tell us a bit more on uh, what uh, does the platform uh, do overall, right? And uh, which domains uh, and industries did uh, did you build this platform for? No, I think I think I'm in fair point, and we we heard Kishore talk about uh, some of the broader domains, 
uh, you know, where we are in the process of applying and with the experience of the competencies and, you know, domain expertise that exists within TechM, I mean, right. we work across sectors. Uh, we are now getting a visibility speaking to a lot of domain leaders that look, these problems manifest themselves in different, similar problems in different ways, uh, in, in different domains. But, you know, some of the threads are common. Uh, we are very lucky that, you know, we are, uh, you know, we have, we have data at our disposal when we work with our clients. So uh, what we build now is not just frameworks, they are solutions that are in the process of, you know, being deployed or being built. And right. I think and that's that's what the thought was that, you know, why don't we share our experience with the broader world out there and some of the problems we are aware of. And I'm pretty sure that, you know, uh, with with the uh, broader participation, we'll, you know, identify more. But coming back to, you know, this particular, you know, uh, platform uh, and the domains industries that, you know, we are working on, I think, you know, it's probably time to set some context in terms of the detail as well. Like, you know, what is it? that essentially the platform is even doing you know right. so for any problems that we typically solve there is first of all a source of data and right. in this case uh, you know you would have you know the 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 name of the uh, webinar as you would see it's it's pretty long yeah. invoice control is one of them so invoice control and you know spend management and classification kind of you know uh, that comes there but invoice control typically means that there are many processes Invoices are one of them. They manifest themselves. They are documents that capture some information there. You essentially, in a procure to pay setting, you right. get these invoices or similar documents. You have to process them. There is a approval or you know non-approval process in the place with the intent of clearing the right ones. Uh, our early experience was with a telco provider in Africa where they had set up a vendor portal and a lot of B2B customers for these telco players, they were sending their invoices. They could for, they could be for various tasks that they do, you know, setting up, setting up infrastructure could be installing a modem, you know, third party people, but basically invoices being sent on those portals. Now, those invoices need to be paid and the telco needs a mechanism by means of which, you know, everything that goes to the vendor portal finally needs to be paid, you know, approved or not approved. So, of course, comes the part of, uh, you know, invoice control first. These invoices come in and they are the source of data in this case that we look at. The second setting, which is something that we'll delve into a little detail today, was for a retailer, which has got, you know, essentially a lot of, you know, uh, places across the globe where they have depots, they do fuel, uh, they, you know, they, they have, uh, uh, you know, places uh, selling other goods as well, fuel being one of them. So they are serviced by fleet management vendors sending invoices for the repair of uh, maintenance of trucks that they operate for them. Right. And in this case, again, there is a vendor portal, but like you sent, like a telco sends it for repair there. In this case, it's fleet management invoices, you know, right. repair yeah. of trucks, axle management, parts, you know, replacements, etc. Again, the process still, we know the common thread is that invoices come in, they need to be approved or not approved. The right spend needs to go through quickly. Anything that is a flag that needs to be checked and it helps the approval. We'll see how, you know, who the, the, the main players are. So, uh, while these experiences we started with invoice control points to taking an invoice and now what we do the initial process is break it down and you know into line level items so invoice is rich repository of unstructured data you know you would right. see i mean a typical invoice that you get for various services that you have it has got you know a lot of information that is relevant to you uh, you know uh, expenses you know the ids etc a lot of other things but it's not it's not structured like a you know row, row column format. So right. the first challenge is you know how do you take that and that that's that's the that's the build, building block of what we do. The second bit is the spend management part. You have got the invoices. You've broken it down into pieces. You're you know taking the right granular level data, the lowest level of granularity. Now you are looking for opportunities around what is termed as identifying revenue leakages, identifying right. management and classification opportunities. We would see later in the, you know, our, our webinar seminar today, my friend Aditya, he was he being very uh, closely involved in the build and delivery of the platform. You know, what does this mean and how does the platform even look like? But we, each of these spend management and classification, uh, you know, opportunities, fraud detection in terms of, you know, invoices that are coming any feedback loop that we are getting in terms of the past decisions that we are making. If we see, you know, we rejected some of the invoices, say, you know, 20,000 in the last, uh, you know, one year, 
what have we learned from that? So I think there comes the part of the AI ML right, right. Then things like forecasting, efficient invoice uh, processing, and identifying certain you know repeat uh, issues as well. It could be duplicates, it could be fraud, or you know uh, things like that. So I think you know each of those we we think becomes an opportunity in manifesting as a point solution on the platform that we are you know building right now. But besides right. that, also there are you know many opportunities there uh, that that we will discuss. Yeah, so I that that's uh, sort of making me curious, Abhay. So, yeah, do you want to share some additional opportunities like within the fleet management uh, bracket? Is is that uh, possible right now? Yeah, I mean, um, we we definitely. I mean, that that's one area that we are pretty passionate about. The fact that we have delved really deeper into you know fleet management type of invoices. So we know that you know while invoice can have many generic decisions that you take, you know, classification of where the spend is going. Fraud or no fraud, duplicates, no duplicates. But within fleet management, now we are going at a level two, level three as well. You know, are there okay. automatic systems for these invoice? You know, these fleets of vehicles that are operating that we can you know tap into and get some real time data, because each of these invoices are typically related or tied to a vehicle as well. And hence comes the repeat offenders or you know, uh, for the lack of better word, rogue vehicles that are you know, you know, leading to more frequent repairs, more frequent, you know, replacements. And then, you know, the the policy and the training aspect of it as well. You know, it's not right, just the, right. uh, the, the parts and uh, things that, uh, that a vehicle has or the expenses that are coming in invoices because of that. It could be because of, you know, how are, let's say, driving driver training programs operating. Can we take some data from there and feed into the systems? I mean, there, it, there could be, uh, you know, uh, some some connect to them and then you know things like that, that so what it essentially means is that when we start developing it and we think that there is a common thread to it in terms of the ingestion of data and processing out of data but by the time it comes to a decision screen different industries typically have you know folks who look at very specific information in case of fleet management right. you know right. people would like to know about the vehicles the invoices and you know very specific things to approve or not approve this could change with respect to you know let's say this operating in a utilities uh, industry scenario or a telecommunications uh, sector i think you know that's what uh, i meant right yeah that's that's pretty good then uh thanks for that Abai. so this actually gives us a good background on what we are discussing here so uh thanks for that so let let me uh, probably involve aditya ja here aditya Adi, so, Adi, uh, before we move to the next uh, speaker uh, let me request our attendees to post the questions in the chat if they have any at the moment you know, we will take the questions at the end during the Q&A, but please post it in the chat if you have any questions at the moment. Thank you. Kindly continue, Adi. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Bal. Uh, yeah, so let's come back to Adi, Aditya. So, uh, Aditya, I just wanted to understand uh, uh, the common challenges, right? Like, like pretty important to understand uh, any, uh, any uh, platform when it comes to uh, whatever we are doing right now, right? So, what are the common challenges that we have probably faced while uh, building and implementing this platform. Also, uh, what are the common challenges that the customer could face? So could you uh, tell us uh, about all that? Yeah, looks like it is not there, but I'm happy to pick it up. So, right? so let me kind of break it into two broad, sorry. Uh, AJ, you there? Okay, so let me break it into two areas, right? Right. See, the first is from a from a, a client or a business organization perspective. Uh, some of the challenges that typically clients run. Uh, one big piece that I at least have have discussed a lot with the clients is around the change management. Right. Right. So when you're trying to implement uh, a model based decision making process into an organization right essentially there that is a huge cultural change within the organization and leaders need to drive this very uh, you know carefully understanding what is the current setup within a within a particular organization how things flow running the sessions making sure that uh, you know all of people's questions are answered right right uh, right sometimes it is just the fear as well uh, right. Okay. If a decision support system or the decision making engine is coming in together, uh, does it mean that my job is at risk? I mean, uh, there is a fear 
absolutely yeah. yeah see these systems when they come in uh, uh, well my personal opinion uh, i don't think the jobs will be at uh, risk uh, right away but there definitely is a need uh, across levels within the organization to understand and start appreciating the models the decision support systems and, and things like that uh, you know within the within the organization right the second challenge that i see from the uh, from the client side uh, of it is uh, around having proper governance and control mechanisms right uh, what i mean by that is uh, when you're trying to experiment or bring in a new way of making decisions, running the business, right? Your governance model uh, should be flexible enough to let the new solution breathe. And it should be tight enough for you to see that you're moving it in the right direction. Right. Uh, you exercise too much governance, you, you kind of suffocate it out. Uh, Right. There is, there is, you run into the case of, uh, you know, analysis paralysis. So many reports, so many data, nobody's looking at actually things won't fly. Right. Striking you need, right balance. Of, 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 you need to be, be careful about that. Right. Uh, yeah. Right. And coming back to from an operational standpoint, right. Again, you know, data is, a, is, a, is always a challenge. You will right. all never get 100% yeah. data that you need. Uh, you will never get data that is like clean, pristine, clear, and, and everything. So it takes a little bit of learning uh, uh, from the data, ensuring, you know, the quality of the data is, uh, you know, properly uh, uh, done. You don't want to run into a situation where, you know, garbage in, garbage out uh, uh, scenario is, is, is coming in. Uh, right. Third operational challenge is, you know, kind of integration with the existing systems. See, the, the, the right. AI ML machine learning models, uh, they need vast amounts of data. Right? Right. They learn from the patterns that exist in the data, the models. Uh, so, and, and, and if you're trying to do an ETL job, uh, right, and trying to get some out in, in bits and pieces, and, and if it's not properly, uh, you know, if it is not sufficient enough, the model that you build or the insights that you are trying to take out are, are not completely true, right? Uh, again, I'm, I'm presuming a lot of our audience who might have signed up for this are from the data scientists or analytics or analyst background. Uh, but, but for the sake benefit of uh, those of the audience who, who aren't, right? Uh, what I mean to say is that you cannot treat a disease just by looking at one or two symptoms, right? You need to integrate the existing data systems in such a way that you're able to flow the data fully, right? The models are exposed uh, to, to the seasonalities in the data, to, to, to all the variations that are possible. And then you, you kind of, uh, you know, build and, and, and take it out uh, uh, from there. Right. Uh, right. One of the last things again, uh, probably AJ is back. He can add more if he has anything that I, I have, have missed out on is, as I said, uh, spend management, procurement managers, uh, with the, uh, a lot of decisions is, is not really captured either in a log format or in a flat file or in an Excel, uh, in any system, right? Uh, when we are trying to build a model, when we see if, if if our prediction is coming closer to, so typically the way we do is, you know, we break, we, we have a holdout sample, we, it's pristine, it's separate, we keep it separate. There's a test data, we take it up, we build the model, we try and check and we see, uh, you know, if we are coming close to it and if the model is good enough and then run it on the untouched data to validate even if our model is good enough or not. And and that's right. the typical uh, cycle that's followed in, in, in any good model building. Uh, exercise right right so this is the stage when you know we, we we build we're on the model when we are trying to understand it's very important for us to talk to the 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 non-system captured uh, data it may not go into the model building as such straight away but right. what it does help us is to uh, properly explain uh, you know the outputs that come out of the effect right 
uh, whether it to and 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 it could it could also uh, you know tell us the level of caution that business managers would need to exercise when they are consuming such outputs uh, right uh, i from my pers- of course and budget is always a problem right? Right. So, from a challenges standpoint, uh, that's how I see are the are the typical challenges. I don't know. Uh, Adi, Abhay, if you think of anything else, please feel free to add. Please. Uh, I think I think you captured it pretty well, uh, Kishore. The governance side of it, the data quality part of it, the complexity of this particular data. I think I mean all the the points. And so so I think and that journey has been extremely enriching. What our understanding has been that irrespective of where we pick up and this is where, you know, it's an art plus science thing as well. An invoice will contain what it contains, but how you enrich that data together with, you know, your domain expertise to be, together with, you know, certain public data sources that exist is going to be critical. Like one of the things that we uh, did while we were looking at fleet management invoices was parts classification. Uh, parts classification of vehicle parts follows different norms in different countries. When we started looking at this data in the US, we started we we understood and we we found a vehicle classification part classification system called as VDMS. It is okay. publicly available, but the but once you integrate it back into you know the whole parts data that you've got, you have got a really enriched set of data. But that itself it's not a it's not a small task. We will touch base on the classification part of it later. Uh, but I think uh, you know uh, that's that's uh, we we have covered all these challenges uh, in in sufficient detail. I think we have covered the challenges. Now that brings me to the next question, actually. So, uh, can we actually uh, get more uh, details about the KPIs that we can probably consider? What what we have considered, and uh, what would be our approach, like to address these challenges and the requirements, right? Um, Aditya, could you uh, give us uh, more on that? Thanks, Adi. Sorry, my network was a little down, so I could not take up this question before, and I feel that this question is connected to the previous question also. Right. Uh, the kind of challenges we faced, and that's why the kind of KPIs we formulated, along with the team of SMEs and data scientist experts, that those KPIs will create that kind of business values right. and the confidence to create this project end to end. Look, I will tell you what how we approach this thing. We when we created and formulated this platform, we were not trying to solve a specific problem like creating a AI algorithm or doing something, say, like a straight jackets classification. We were right. trying to create AI in action, a complete end-to-end one-stop solution, which can solve the problem of, let's say, revenue leakage and spend management. Right. And what we were trying to do is to bring the element of AI, which was missing so far in this kind of ecosystem. And the reason for that was, which perhaps Kishore brought out, that complexity of spend data. So we exactly did not know what are the KPIs which should be there in the first place, which can bring that value addition immediately from the AI perspective, which was not captured so far. I will tell you the KPIs name. The first and most obvious KPIs is the saving on the spend management, minimizing reduction of the revenue leakage, the financial KPIs. This was one of the KPIs where we implemented the AI before AI implemented and after AI implemented. What is the change? What is the, I would say, metrics to capture that? That was the first KPI. The state of hitting the eyes of the anyone who's investing money into it. Numbers two uh, of a KPI was operational efficiency KPIs because they previously when this AI our solution platform was not there. Organizations we have seen have a traditional ERP systems, uh, uh, financial application systems, but they work in silos. When it comes about taking decision or active action, which Kishore suggested in the very beginning, they have data, but that is not helping in taking a decision. So that decision was not there, which was leading in latency, higher latency or more cycle invoice processing time. So with implementation of AI, this operational efficiency has been brought in. The the cycle time of approving or disapproving invoice has come down. Later in a demo, which we will show that how our decision support system is enabling the operational people to use this tool in a very quicker way, much quicker way. And the third KPI, I think where we where our platform extends, it is not only the invoices, the operational people, but the third party. There was our suppliers, our vendors. We have some kind of contractual obligations with them. We have some kind of invoices coming through them. So whenever we are taking some action, there is an impact which is going to them, which means if we have to renegotiating and contract. So, and here is the play of LLM and OCR. So 
if we can create that kind of a contract in the right format with the right language and can ship to that person much more immediately now. Right. So reducing the cycle time for contract renegotiation was also one of the KPIs we worked. Second KPI was that what exactly to put in the contract. Because earlier they were the, we saw the teams were struggling. So these were the kind of the KPIs and the kind of challenges we saw. And it was a collaborative effort with the data scientists and the community of the end users that yes, this is something which you can we should work on. And yes, we worked on. So I would say relating to from operational level of KPIs for operational people to the level of CXOs, the decision making revenue leakage KPIs. So we had covered all sorts of KPIs there. That sounds like we have covered uh, all the bases uh, per se. So that's that's pretty good. So now uh, now that we've heard the experiences of uh, what is happening and what we have done so far and how it, this could probably help the client and everything. So I, I just wanted to also uh, check with you guys. Can we have a demo of sorts uh, so that we can understand on what we've been talking about so far? And uh, this this makes it easier. Right. Uh, Abai, uh, anything from, from that? Uh... Yeah, 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 sure. So I think, I mean, the, the, the standard adage of, you know, picture is worth a thousand words. Absolutely. So, uh, when we uh, wanted to, you know, while we were planning the talk itself, we were like, you know, okay, you know, let's share some of the things that we have built. It's a, it's a broad piece. The platform that we envision can do many things, you know, I right. like analytical workbenches. Too. Right. Right. It's got a robust data, uh, you know, management, ETL, you know, section to a data science elements in terms of building models and visualization and front ends that you can do. We thought that we pick up a section of what we have built uh, utilizing these, you know, invoice data and how do, how does an end user see these, you know, sees these uh, results. So as a recommendation system, the end user of whatever we build, you know, using the data and all the things that we talked about is ease of decision making having daily invoices they are typically going to see in front of them with their experience they are you know uh, some of the folks have worked 15 20 years in the area they understand the domain very well what we can do is facilitate them to take those decisions faster better and more accurately right. so in in that spirit what i will do is i'm going to play a, a small demo in terms of, you know, that shows a section of uh, this particular uh, uh, platform that we have built. And it would be, it starts with the decision screen uh, that uh, that we, uh, that you can see. Please let me know when, uh, you know, my screen is. Hello, there. everyone. Yeah. So you can see. Yeah. So what do you see? I'm, I'm going to play this demo. Uh, uh, Aditya, please tell me if the, oh, the audio is visible. But what you see on front is a decision screen. So as a decision maker, I see the locations, I see invoices and, you know, supplier names and all the things in, and the actions on top are the ones that need investigation right. and in the green, the ones that are good to approve. So, uh, yeah, I can, I can see that yeah, pretty clear that way. Yeah. 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 I'm going to play this. Hello everyone. Please. This is a Please. decision support system. The audio, I mean, is it audible? Yes. Yes. It is. yes help to analyze on procure to pay invoice data. The data are extracted from OCR system for the PDF and provided as input to the AI platform with capabilities that include data management, transformation, AI ML model build and robust visualization. This decision support system is a part of the above mentioned AI ML data platform, which provides the information to the decision maker about the invoice, whether it needs investigation or it is good to approve and information about the invoice, which shows the insights processed from the AML system and gives the information about each line item, how much it has been uh, deferred from the actual price. And there will be a recommendation provided for the decision maker where he can change his decision and give this input as a feedback to the system so that the system can self learn on train based on the information which is labeled today. Along with this, the information, the system provides a category yeah, level insight as well, based on the category. Yeah, I pause it, yeah. Okay. So for our audience, I think it must be interesting if you could just uh, drag the screen back a little bit. So see, when you build a good decision making support system, so uh, I want you to show where the comment section is. Uh, Right. So the tool or the interface where people are, let's say, looking at 
at, at, at different columns, uh, right? What, what's happening and they're trying to make a decision. Within the solution interface itself, we've also captured or given the uh, you know choice uh, for the user to input their comments, right? So sometimes uh, whether uh, you know, yeah, this is fine or sorry, you said 180 invoices are correct, but they are not really correct. So any comments, yeah, here is the one if you look at it, uh, right? Once the recommendation is there. What are the impacting variables? And then there is a comment section, which is a free flow text, right? See, for any model building, one of the most important points to inbuilt into the into the into the model is to how do, how do we improve it, right? So these kind of uh, comments and 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 you know investigating into these, which which form a feedback loop into the whole decision support system building process actually helps us build a, a a good DSS support engine for for the decisions that clients have to make right yeah sorry about that I thought it was okay. just interesting so no, no, I think I think very very fair point uh, uh, you know uh, uh, Kishore uh, I'm glad that uh, you asked me to stop there and that's, move, that's a very question, core, I think, uh, yeah sorry I think the audience get the idea of it uh, what else do you have for us, Ali? Yes, so uh, I think we are good with the demo. We kind of have a good uh, idea on how this works and what we've done so far. So thank you so much, Abhay and Kishore, for that. Yeah, so uh, let me bring back Aditya here. So Aditya, please tell us on who would benefit out of this decision support system and uh, who are our target audience, like end users, right, end of the day. I think your question has two parts. Who are the end users who will be using this platform and then who will benefit out of it? So, yes, I think that is that is exactly what we have been built. Right. So we are trying the people who will be using this software, which uh, our platform, which I was just showing. So the first screen you show that was the decision support system. So the beauty of it was that we are presenting this to an operational user, a procured to pay guy who is supposed to either approve or reject an invoice or let's say any document which comes as a supplier or vendor. So this, what we are showing to him is in the first place that what are the actions he needs to take, what right. are the invoices which are important. So he's our first user and he is the most important guy for us because with him we have actually built the platform. He's going to use it. And the second point which Kishore mentioned that feedback loop. So he is free to give his free text comments which goes as, as a feedback loop to our recommendation system engine. So your first set of users. Second set of users are those users who actually negotiate with the suppliers and vendors, the, the team which have a negotiation with them. So they, they have a separate, separate set of KPIs for them also, who use the, the separate screen, which is the next screen which we were showing, that they are used about that one. And the third are our CXO users, who will be not using this operational day-to-day, -day, how it is being used, but what is actually the outcome? What is the revenue and the variance which is coming down after applying the AI? So there are three set of matrices, three set of screens, and three set of users. Our most important target are people, because as they say, no matter how great your product is, if it is not being used, it is of no value. Absolutely. So, so we have got our set of end users and how they will be using it. That thing is, I think, is wonderfully coming out of it. And yeah, that's when it's used. Great. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Uh, thanks, thanks, Aditya. So, Abhay, just wanted to quickly uh, get through this. So. Uh, can this be considered like a plug and play product of sorts across domains? I just want a quick answer across it. So I think, question. well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the, usually the short answer is like, uh, yeah, it is. But we think that for the best use, there are certain parts that are common, which we consider as skeletal structures that can be used to recreate it or quickly build certain parts for certain domains. But domain, uh, you know, specific, uh, you know, usability and applicability in terms of decision making is something that, you know, that only comes with working with the end users, working with the experts who have worked there to have those, you know, imbibe and, you know, get those characteristics in the product that you're building. So what we have built mm -hmm. does have parts of, you know, something that can be recreated, but some of those user interfaces, I think, you know, what we, our experience with two of the domains is that well, we have used used those core parts, those core kernels to 
build what we have got and i think you know that journey uh, continues kishor would you like to add to that yeah yeah uh, of course thanks thanks abhi so aditi it's 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 like this right uh, we we are building a ferrari uh, right and 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 the users who are there the business users and and lot of things are at stake right a uh, cookie cutter solution lift and shift plug and play will never work right never right uh that being said okay uh, is there no use of doing all of this of course there is a lot of use so uh we kind of in the back end so two different ways that we try and leverage our experience and and how we make it quick for the next client whoever signs up for this uh, solution right we always keep adding uh to the list of checkpoints that are there say for example uh we talked a little bit in the earlier part of the discussion about the data quality issues right what kind of issues typically come what are there uh, so when we encounter a new issue that we add up to our checklist of things so that the next time when we have to run a data quality check there is that one additional test that gets run again right where you are becoming a little bit more smarter than you were before right i mean uh, this this has been my message to 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 my team as well right always try and do your job a little better than what you did today uh, right so can we make the way we 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 is it a, is it a plug and play okay not not completely it it, it can never be uh, a complete plug and play a solutions like this you are talking of different systems uh, you know the age of the systems is different you are talking of in fact different processes within each of the client organization sometimes it's the culture itself right People are just right. used to it right uh, again thanks to the, the 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 you know all the cool apps that we use today uh, right a uh, lot of people become very you know uh, it's 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 both it's it's positive and negative as well i'll tell you why why it is why it is negative and why it is positive it's positive because Uh, a lot of business users and everyone they are becoming more and more familiar with the technology right comfortable with the right, technology right right they are happy to use it they want to go about it uh, right where it kind of is a double whammy where it gets negative is that is you know they they want this these these heavy solutions also in the look and feel of those cool apps for example people would have used spotify right why can't you your recommendation engine or your say decision support engine system be like a spotify app to me where i can check it comes recommends you know what last time last year uh, or last time in a different geography similar manager who's in the same work profile took a decision like this so recommending those things um, right and and obviously with that comes the cost and and, and other challenges as well uh, right so, so uh, i would say it's an interesting place to be for sure and uh, it may not be 100% plug and play uh, a solution or a platform that we have right uh, but that being said every single time we do this we get that much more uh, faster quicker smarter in in you know enabling the solution for our uh, clients businesses and the good good news is that we can tailor make it right of course that's what yeah. they want i mean right. nobody buys uh, you know when 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 you're buying a ferrari uh, you know there's there's a difference no disrespect to any of the uh, regular cars out there in the market uh, but then you know you you want your seat up you want your seat down you want cool looking colors so on and so forth so right yeah, it's custom built right right so amazing that's that's absolutely interesting and i've uh, learned quite a lot in this session uh, uh, thanks for that uh, kishor uh, and aditya so uh, let's probably jump into the qa session i think we have questions uh, coming in so uh, abal do you want to take this yeah sure uh, so the first question has come from mr alok he's asking how can organizations have, uh, effectively so abal have answered that in the chat uh, on the effective okay. integration i i, I saw that uh, but for the benefit of uh, the recording yeah. if you answer this on the <laughs> on this platform it will be awesome <laughs> that is i was taking it off sure, so should sure. i repeat the question yeah please please sorry so how can organizations effectively integrate this platform or solution into their existing workflows or systems 
Yeah. See, integration again is is not a, a you know quick fix kind of a solution, right? Uh, typically, we 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 start off with first understanding what exists, uh, right? The the existing systems that are there, the data systems. Uh, where is the data lying? What are the limitations of those systems, uh, right? Then we go about architecting the tech components, uh, you know, uh, which would uh make uh this has to be a continuous piece right the data should continuously be coming in right we build the model uh, model building happens uh and then it needs to get integrated into into the user interface the, the which uh, people are actually using sometimes clients already have a user uh, you know downstream application that their business users are very familiar with say i don't know i mean a power bi a click or or any such uh, downstream applications that needs to be fitted around. Uh, so we figure out the tech component and the architecting uh, part of it. And another uh, key thing that we do is we recommend our clients to start small. Right? This is a big problem. Uh, but to validate the models, whether to make sure that we are building the whole thing in a, in a, in a proper way, we try and limit the scope in the initial stages to say a particular product category or a particular geography. Uh, you know where you are, where you where you can uh, do the stress testing of the solution, the platform that you built, uh, the usage aspect of it, yeah, right? So we follow this approach of of crawl, walk, run, uh, where during your 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 crawl stage, you're making sure that you know you have everything properly set up. Uh, it's it's robust enough to to go do that. Walk stage is is you know when we get the users on to bo on board. Uh, they start using the tool, bugs come up, we fix them, and then we figure out what is the next uh, level is on to the scaling up of the solution part of it, right? How can we add rest of the business categories or product categories or more geographies into the into the whole platform? Uh, right, I hope that answers uh, Mr. Alok's question. Okay, uh, look, in case anyone of you feel the question is not aptly answered or you want more explanation, then you can raise your hand. And I'll unmute yourself to ask further questions, please. So I'll take up the next question, which is asked by Mr. Mubashir Hussain. The question is, workflow automation removes the human component, component from repetitive essential tasks, giving you transparency and help to increase efficiency. So where is the question? I, I'm he, just He was from the point of view. I would, yeah. I would definitely agree with uh, Correct. Mr. Correct. Hussain. Uh, where when when you automate, obviously you know your repetitive tasks. They definitely, yeah. I mean, we we agree on the point. Correct. The only addition so, uh, to what it is doing, besides automating what was happening, like so, besides decision automation, we are also providing some of the decisions that can be missed. You know, things like fraud, things like duplicates. So. And and we, we saw this in the data that came as well, like, uh, you know, we can identify duplicate invoices. So suppose somebody submitted an invoice that was submitted a year back, exactly in the same shape and form. Is the system robust enough? Or somebody who worked on it, it will be hard to believe that they immediately recognize something that they've seen like, you know, six months back. But AI doesn't, uh, you know, differentiate on this. When you have repository of data or similar invoices that are already in store, it raises a flag besides automating it in front of, you know, a human, uh, you know, expert saying that, look, uh, we, it looks like something like this 100% came eight months back. I mean, do you want to have a look at it? And I think that's what we, we, we have built a system that is human in the loop. It's not just pure play. You know, when we are confident about that flagging, we automate it to the next step in, in terms of workflow. So I think it just goes a little beyond uh, just automating. Okay. Thanks, Abhay, for the clarifications. Um, I'll quickly move to the next question, which is asked by Mr. Rajat Rawat. So he's asking, in terms of user experience, how initiative is your platform for technical users or those new to the field? I will take up that question, Bal. Great. I think this is actually very... Very good question. Very fundamental question for the success of any platform. Uh, and this this was one of the challenges we faced while developing this platform. Uh, I would say it's something with change management. 
how do you change the existing process flow workflows and still people love your platform why will they use it and one of the biggest reason they will use it is that if the uh, the navigation is intuitive it is simple if it is simple to use if it solves their problem in the way they will like it to get solved and that is what this platform is all about so if you ask me the answer to this question is yes the uh, idea is intuitive straightforward simple in one answer second element was ai explainability some of the times when we deploy complex ai algorithm be it let's say large language models or any nlp or a predictive or forecasting model if explainability is not there there will be still resistance from the people who will use it because why will they believe a decision coming from ai if they cannot understand it so that was another element which you added to this platform so and the third part if you ask me uh, a level of self service components for the cxos or the people who are using the visualization through it they could customize the visualization according to their to their needs they can write a simpler google search and they would get the solutions so all these things were added to make the solution very simple and to be used by the people who will use on day to day basis and they can customize it to the needs and necessity so yeah this is how we developed it and that is how i would say that is how we have kept to keep it very simple for day to day use I hope that answers the question yes i hope rajat your question is answered i'll move to the next question which is asked by ms neha vardhan she is asking how do you see this platform or solution evolving in the next few years and what impact do you anticipate on industry trends so would uh, kishore would you like to take this question yeah, yeah of course see this 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 is again a great question thanks neha for that uh, you're right i see a lot of amalgamation coming into play right uh, today we have uh, you know the, the 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 smart consumer durables which is basically your fridge can order your milk and eggs if they're not there anymore in your fridge so in the coming years i i kind of see that uh, as these technologies evolve more and more which helps reduce the the data storage cost and the compute cost very heavily uh, right uh, these becoming integrated more and more into into the existing tools yeah, right i mean uh, if i were to you know dare to think or or go wild a little bit about it uh, organizations use some or the other you know office tool say a microsoft uh, where where in emails people are talking so so can the can the platform be smart enough if it were to be plugged into the to the microsoft suite of uh, 365 products can it be smart enough to see what people are writing and then you know come back with uh, take that into the decision making process and and come back with some recommendations of it uh, right i mean <laughs> It's, it's possible, I think, but I think we have some time to uh, go about it. Uh, in terms of the industry uh, trends, uh, one, uh, we see acceptance of, uh, you know, model-based decisions, model-based solutions uh, will continue to increase at a much greater speed than what it is. Uh, second, the need for uh, business managers, uh, business leaders, uh, and the, and 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 all the decision makers in the process to uh, learn and and get familiar with with such systems will 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 continue to uh, increase for sure. Uh, I also see a lot of consolidation or solidarity, so to say, uh, right. Uh, especially on the spend side of things, for example, the detailed example that uh, uh, Mr. Abhay had talked about, right, where you have these these spare parts. So globally, if you think about it today, uh, there is no central master list. A nut, the same nut, is referred in different countries differently. In Mexico, it's different. In US, different. In, in India, it's different. In Europe, it's different. In Australia, it's different. Uh, right. So what I mean by the consolidation part of it is that globally, if we were able to, you know, uh, create those kind of, it, it is a time taking process, but the trend is moving towards that. Yeah, right. So, so those specifications and those things can be done. A lot of it can become a lot more easy. 
So yeah. top of my mind, these are some of the trends that come again. Yeah. Uh, AJ, AJ, feel free to add your perspective as well. I think, I think, I mean, besides the cliche and about generative AI, you know, floating around, I think one of the ways where we are utilizing Gen AI is on data like this. Forms of descriptive information coming from invoices. Generative AI is really great at, you know, cutting that uh, information from AI. Whatever experience has been, and this will probably evolve in a few years, that Gen AI will be really well informed for these domain centric solutions when we train those algorithms to understand that language. Currently, foundational models we realize for this work are not geared to understand just, let's say, fleet management data. It is not going to be in a general conversation, people talking about, you know, parts, descriptions, etc. But you take that foundational model. You feed into it curated data and we curated it with the help of the domain teams that we work with us, you know, looked at line level items, said that, look, this whole jargon means a headlamp. It means like a brake oil or something like that. The moment we started training it, I think some really amazing stuff started happening. We were suddenly able to classify things like really fast. And then you see, okay, this is this for this itself. And it, it would have taken you so much, so, so long. So I think that's definitely one of the trends that will happen. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we, we are, I'm happy we. I think so we have time left for just one last question, I guess. So we'll pick up, uh, Mr. Abhishek's question. He has two questions actually. Uh, so he's, uh, these are IT service related questions uh, related accounts uh, he's asking this question his first question is how can this platform help to shift left from l2 teams and the second one is how can this platform enhance persona based eux so oh. aditya okay. and abhi would you like to pick up or maybe we can request kishore sure. yeah go ahead aditya yes aditya go on please if you ask me, I would like to understand this question more in context right now. Because at this stage, just looking at these statements, I have not a very clear on what question is. If I may want to take I this. Think, I think I mean I can I can take a stab at the first one. Look, IT service desk typically you you send queries, and this is how I understand it. I mean, uh, please uh, feel free to uh, you know uh, you know correct uh, uh, towards the end of it. You know, once we're done, so service desk typically queries are put for. You know, you put queries, you ask queries, those queries could be related to many things, you know, fixing of things, you know, things like uh, restart the computer, you know, go to this application, do these changes, you know, navigate to these menus and things like that. And L1 and L2 are your level one and level two queries. You know, if you're not able to sort it at level one, level two, and expertise, knowledge, etc., typically vary as you move from an L1 to L2. So your goal typically is that get it right in the first go. And I think it's a... Uh, with and especially with a, a platform like this, if I now anticipate these queries coming in, and this is with context of what we are talking, the queries that are coming as unstructured data is akin to what we are pulling from invoices, what we talked about today. So each of these queries come in, the system that we have built reads that particular thing. And in this case, there is also knowledge bases that are there. Mm -hmm. Service test queries can be sorted because of some, you know, best way of you know doing it and this is what people are trained on so i anticipate this system to take a query in like one by one the moment it is able to provide a very specific solution saying that this particular query means go to this menu check this option and your screen is going to you know something is going to change you know wh whatever that query is you can self-serve it if you're not able to do that then you go to the second level and you know somebody picks up the phone or somebody talks to you i think that's the the enhanced persona based eux i don't get i mean it's is it cx or uh, uh, you know yeah. or it's a terminology i would believe i mean i'm uh, you yeah. know, i'm not able to gather that um, abhishek i have sent you unmute request if you want more details you can unmute yourself and ask the question you know yes. give more details and explain looks like i have sent the message on chat also but looks like abhishek's questions is answered we assume since he is not uh, responding back so great i guess he's saying okay, he can't just just a moment just just a moment he said he can't unmute just give me a second 
end user experience. Okay. <laughs> Persona based end user experience, UX. That's what oh, is talking about. I think, uh, I, think uh, I would I would agree with what uh, Abhay had uh, said. Right, this platform in its current shape and form existing today, it cannot be replicated to you know moving uh, shifting left the L two support system that is there. Uh, that being said, it has components uh, that Abhay uh, had talked about where it reads off the unstructured data, uh, right? It, and 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 and. and it kind of recommendation uh, engine is there, which can kind of give that uh, what those possible decisions could be. So those can be replicated, and and I think that will be an interesting, uh, I would say, uh, use case or a test case uh, for us to explore for sure. Uh, second, on the end user experience, uh, like this. Uh, one of the things that that AJ talked about, I know we are a little over time, so I'll try to very be brief here, is uh, role based uh, views uh, within the platform. Right, uh, someone who's a senior leader, a CXO, uh, he may not be uh, really interested to understand at a minute detail level what's happening from a, a product category or a subcategory level, but would definitely want to keep a tab on. Uh, you know, uh, where the costs are rising, uh, you know, where the leakages are happening, uh, anything that is going on. Vis-a-vis -vis, uh, someone who's in the operations, they are very cure, keen to know, I need the exact detail of what is happening on this one. Uh, right. So, so we've, we've included those uh, views into it and typically when we go and develop a user interface uh, dashboard we we follow the agile methodology right we come back with we, we make some initial screens run them through the uh, actual users uh, you know tell them hey can you use them and and tell what it is uh, further that you want to add and you don't want to add so we go through that iterative process uh, and and develop that so end user experience is 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 always kept in mind right from the word go for us to build these solutions uh, and, and take this forward. Great. That brings us to end of a QA. Uh, any closing statements, Adi? We close this session by thanking all the panel members uh, here. Kishore, Abhay, and Aditya, thanks for your time and uh, giving us some very useful insights on the platform. Uh, and thanks everyone for, everyone for joining in. Uh, hope you had a good session in understanding one of the capabilities of AI and ML that has a great return in value and delivery. Right? We will be back with more uh, such interesting tech talk show in future. Until then, you guys take care and have a great evening and have a great weekend too. Sure. Thank you, everyone, and thanks uh, Adi and Bal. Uh, you you guys have done a tremendous job on this. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you so Thanks. much. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye.